I don't even know. You just like pick a topic. Let's go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Bros, Bibles, and Beer. This is episode 225. Zach, how's it going? I am fantastic, Jeff. Thanks that for That is asking. fantastic. Andy, how are you? I too am fantastic. Okay. And uh, I'm in wet January. <laughs> All right. And who? Carrie, how are you? The Cowboys lost. Oh. Pour one out. For the Cowboys, Woo! come on, baby. The um, Rams, the Steelers, and the Steelers. All of our teams, whatever that means. Who cares about the Steelers? Let's talk about the Cowboys. Everyone's talking about the Cowboys right now. They're just talking about when, they are ta- when will the coach get fired? Twenty nine years I've been in mourning. Oh. It's like Winnie Cooper breaking my heart every effing year. Wow, I wonder Winnie, Winnie Cooper. Cooper. Oh my God, <laughs> timely I love reference. Her. But yeah, who didn't love her? Exactly. And that's my life since 1995. She had those pouty eyes. Oh, Winnie Cooper. That's the Cowboys. Mm. It was Romo, now it's Dak. And she had that long, dark yeah. hair. She was gorgeous. Shiny. I think like Pantene Pro V must have been at play exactly. there. Something like that. That's what I used to use when Is I Is that our sponsor hair. tonight? Speaking Pantene of- Pro V. <laughs> How's that old fashioned? Of- I was going to say, speaking of Pantene Pro V, dude, Let's go. this thing is shiny. I mean, that is like, <laughs> that's made with love. Okay, talk talk me through this. It's made with bits of real wind. Well, first of all, it's Blade and Bow, which is a fantastic bourbon. Okay. And uh, one worth mm. exploring. Second of all, there's some bitters in there you've never heard of. It's not important, but it's like literally an eyedropper, four drops of bitters, two drops of saline solution, like, like 20% salt, 80% water, and a little simple syrup, ice, and then the orange zest. And it's, it's just... It's like Jesus in a cup. I recorded the whole thing. We're gonna have it. Oh, you online him it's, making them? It's oh, yes, yeah. it's it's an immaculate it's blood conception, conception. <laughs> blood, blood of Christ. <laughs> well, it's a transfiguration right there. Transubstantiation. <laughs> it's probably good for us to do a little introduction here. Straight shot to heaven. Yeah, Carrie, welcome back. It's good to be back. How, how do you want to be introduced? Like, what are we plugging yeah, right? You did after? it, like, Carrie Robinson. Long time listener. A big fan of Bros Bible and Beer, like a big fan. I I, I am a marketer of your podcast so, of epic, so epic proportion. <laughs> so big, so huge. Some say it's the biggest. You got to pull the string apart. Yeah, I don't know. You tell me how you want to market me. I don't care. Uh, you professional Christian. I'm a professional, cr- professional <laughs> Christian. That's Carrie's favorite thing to hear. You're not going to be. You're Christian. not going to be marketing Pantene Pro V. No, tell you I that. have no hair. No hair on my head. <laughs> Only on my back. It's there. That was gross. Yeah. You didn't need to share that. Sorry. Father, husband, That's pastor, right. pastor, pastor, yep. pastor all disaster. Yep. Yeah, all the things. All the things. And like uh, all of us, we're all pastors. And uh, <laughs> aspiring mixologist. I will say that. It's def- aspiring is a good word. Yeah. One day, I think in about, I'm 43 right now. I'll be 44 this year. By 50, I want to own a restaurant. That is, it's designed around mixology. Dude. So the it's pair the every drink is paired with food. Smaller restaurant. That's my goal. We'll see what happens. I would go to that restaurant. Yeah, and like you want to go, like like you go hang. It's chill. Yeah, good food, seasonal menu. We'll see what happens. I already I already want to go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm excited. Done. I feel like we're halfway there right now with the drinks. So what are we drinking? It's yeah. an old fashioned, and like you described. What I love about this, I said this before we started rolling, is most bars, because people like things sweet and tasty, they make the mm. old fashioned too sweet. Too sweet. Too sweet. And so I end up more often than not, if I get a if I get a whiskey, it's just neat. It's just yeah. a whiskey neat. Um, but I do like an old fashioned when it's done like this, a little bit of bite to it. Yep. A little bite, little it should be a little bite. No muddled fruit. If they muddle the fruit, get out of there right away. Mm. And it should just like uh be smooth and then hit you in the back of the throat and then you're like, this is good. Where does metal fruit in an old fashioned rank uh, as far as heresy goes? That compared to other I would actual say heresies. On a, on a scale of Zach to Jeff, I would say it's on the scale of, of Zach of heresy when it comes to... <laughs> but you still hang out with it. So, that's, so Jeff... That's so whoa, the whoa. Top. Breaking Going news. to hell. Right foot. <laughs> Going to hell. Breaking news. Jeff, Jeff in this scale is... Better 
Is better biblically? Is this where we're going? I think Welcome so. Welcome to the okay. real world, All Zach. Right. I mean, I'm a longtime listener, and so, so I would we, say... He's got some street cred. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jeff hasn't read the Bible yet, have you, Jeff? I probably, I probably should have put Andy on you there. You know, because- under the radar, read it, and uh, just... Waiting to pounce on you guys. Okay. Read All right. It, read it and forget it. You did talk right. about that. Like one, like I think I, I don't remember exactly what episode Zach, but recently you, I, th- I don't want to quote you inaccurately, but you said something about. He quotes the Bible inaccurately. Go ahead. Fair. Okay. But you said something about like, if somebody has this radical encounter with God, you don't want to encourage them to read the Bible. That's mostly true. With maybe caveats. Yeah. For for Jeff. And when I said that, and it wasn't even that recent, I think I recapped it recently when I gave him the Pete Enns book for Christmas. Yeah. Um, Listen to that episode, by the way. And that was the joke when I was like probably in the full throes of of my own deconstruction and just retesting, reevaluating yeah. a couple of the cards in the house of cards that was my faith got pulled and it was, it was rocky there. Um, but I I did say, hey Jeff, if you're just you had you're an experienced guy, you had the God experience, you didn't have the God experience through reading the Bible. Although I'm open to the idea that that happens, that happens for people. Some people that's where they experience God is digging into the Bible. Don't go into the Bible and let it handicap you. Because if you read the Bible, I can't believe I'm helping you right you now. If you read the Bible and pay attention and. You there, there's some weird You became shit. Scott for there's, a moment there's for a millisecond there. if you pay attention. That's like old school Scott, right? Well, because a lot of times we just assume the Bible is the Bible, and and so you're like, well, this doesn't seem to match up with that, but it's it's the Bible, it's God's word. Everything works out in the end. You don't but if you if you really drill into some of those weird inconsistencies, it can throw you. So but not everybody. That was my experience, and I was probably projecting, but you're so you're right, Carrie. And that was probably a lot. I, at some no, point, it's good to know why you believe what you believe, though. Correct. Yeah, I fundamentally have a, a like a an impossible time with what you're saying, but it's okay. Let's just. Move <laughs> right. like I listened. I was like, okay, that's the worst thing I've ever heard said in my life. And I wholeheartedly love you, Zach. So I Zach's just, also in Doctor Fauci's Tuesday Night Poker. Thing, so what? you know, you know they they know everything goes. It doesn't even matter. matter. You you make up whatever you want. I don't remember. I don't know. That's not a good Fauci. I've never tried it before, but we'll work on that. I appreciate it. Let's workshop it later. Okay. (laughs) Well, so I I got a question. There's a little news story that caught my eye. Um, And we all like drinking beer and and, and bourbon uh, to varying degrees. But uh, there was a... Oh, the order of this just totally went backwards. I had it queued up. (laughs) A megachurch pastor somewhere in the Midwest... Got let go because he was drinking in church, or he was drinking in the facility was he on church grounds during red his duties. wines. Oh. I don't think it was. Now I'm going to throw shade at the Christian Post. Oh, let's go. I mean, there was zero details, like no detail. Was it on Sunday mornings? Was he getting drunk? There's no. Was or, he naked? Was he? <laughs> was he? Hopefully. Um. <clears throat> was he in his office and doing a little research and, and writing his sermon and he's having a beer. That's very different than like being research. inebriated and, uh, and doing it on a Sunday morning. None of those details were in the article. Shame on you, Christian Post. Give Con- us more deets. But Con- Congregation, drunkenness is bad. The- and I tested it this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> and let me tell you, from my firsthand experience, it's bad. So when was the last time you drank in church, Carrie? That's my <laughs> Well, we uh, we currently meet in a high school, so it's illegal. But okay. uh, we, I have never done that. All I've right. thought about it, but uh, no, I've never done that. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever done communion with real wine? Sure. Yeah. Okay. But in in church, not at the we. we like, so we're currently in a portable environment. Okay. Well, so in in any any environment where you're running church. Uh, probably not because okay. most of our stuff would be like, we have the like, little juice cups and little wafers on top, but right. I'm not opposed to it. Yeah. But in like small environments where it's family or friends and we're doing communion, that, that's not an issue for me. I think that that- It's think, curiosity. It's yeah. not a big deal. I mean, the whole, the whole concept of alcohol and Christianity 
it really went cattywampus at the end of the 1800s, early 1900s. Wait, wait, would you stop for a moment? Did you say cattywampus? Yeah. So he's from Texas. It, I am. I mean, I, I did grow up there, but I'm not. I mean, sure. Yeah, I did. Like the late 1800s, early 1900s. That's when things went crazy. There's like, Is it, it's when a golf caddy gets his ass kicked, right? That's exactly right. Something like that. But in uh, for the entire 2,000 years of the church, like having wine or drinking would have been synonymous with Christianity. It wasn't an issue. It wasn't until, honestly, saloons in the Wild West came in and there was like debauchery with like prostitution and guys going crazy. And then you mix that with like, actually the Methodist church did this whole, the women's suffrage movement. And that's what led to prohibition in the United States because guys were drinking to get just sloshed and hammered. And that that's what ushered in the prohibition. And then on the heels of that, you had this, the Pentecostal movement that broke out and that was like all holiness, righteousness, like don't do anything wrong. And so it, it kind of broke away from what the previous 2000 years of the church was like. And, uh, and, and it would have been normal at any environment to go to uh, a home or to a church service and, 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 and drinking would have been normal. But then in the late 1800s, 19, early 1900s, that changed like drastically. Okay. Yeah. And it would have been history lesson. Communi- I like it. Communion would have been uh, just you're just eating a meal. You're yes, sharing, sharing absolutely a meal, normal. breaking bread, drinking wine yep. together. It wasn't yeah. like, hey, now we're going to have the special bread and the special wine. Well, in the early church, now. too, they were like meeting daily. They were eating meals and they were drinking wine. I knew we'd agree on yeah. something. Pretty smaller groups, too, right? Oh, like, this yeah. is like. This is like a home church kind of stuff. Yeah, like, but then it, it branched out in the churches, like like in the 1400s, they, they, they started building churches and that that like was became a normal thing. But like there was never an issue with alcohol within the church until the late 1800s, early 1900s. And that's what changed everything. When the saloons and everything yeah, rose Yeah, because up. they were like, okay. because guys were going to saloons and getting just sloshed and sleeping with prostitutes. It was bad. And then going to their Bible study. Oh, exactly. I feel like I have to put on my Scott hat for a second here, though. Doesn't Paul talk about drunkenness in the church in relation to communion somewhere? Well, obviously, there's never a place in the New Testament where drunkenness is acceptable. Yeah. There's never a place for that. But the the cultural concept of that shifted yeah. at the turn of the century. And and the women's suffrage movement was a big part of that, to be honest with you. <laughs> it was a big part. That's what led to prohibition. And and then and then you had speakeasies breaking up. So people are not going to bars to hang out. Mm. They're going to bars to get drunk as fast as they can, then leave as fast as they can. So the whole cultural mindset shifted dramatically. But uh that's that's funny. Like yeah, we're not allowed to drink anymore, so let's just knock it out real quick so you can go home and right. <laughs> get just hammered. Be a family man. <laughs> yeah. Is that not what people do now? They finish There's work a version of that, I'm sure. Like cram in two or three pints in 20 minutes. On the way oh, home. Yeah. Sorry, hey, honey, hey. I'm running late. <laughs> then come home. <laughs> uh, for clarity's sake, I mentioned the story. Uh, the quote is, uh, the pastor is Chapel Street Church in Illinois influential evangelical mega church in the Chicago suburbs. He's been placed on leave for, a, his name is Jeff Frazier, for, a, quote, use of alcohol on church premises while performing duties, which I still don't know what that means. That could be Too Sunday vague. morning preaching, could be middle of the week and nobody's around, but also he he concealed it. So maybe that that was the rub. Or maybe they just were looking for a reason to get get rid of him and they found one. But who knows? There's not much else in the article, as is the Christian Post. Sounds way. like my 11th grade or 11th or 12th grade, uh, I don't know, it was Polly Sy or whatever the teacher was. He was one of the football coaches at my high school. And he had, uh, everybody knew, it was just, he had a <laughs> bourbon bottle in his bottom drawer. And after doing a bunch of notes on the, whatever the old things were that you'd write and it would project, and he, he, uh, he would, kick back and every once in a while just kind <laughs> of <enjoy>. slide down <laughs> slide down to the drawer and and then pop back up and uh people that went up to him could smell his breath and you know, i think i've told he was this, doing it during his duties i think i've told this story on the pod before but uh there is i've have it on good authority that amy grant when she's on stage uh she has she has a glass of bourbon 
<laughs> that she uses, and it's uh, for her throat. <clears> throat. Baby, baby, I'm taken with the notion <laughs> to love you with the sweetest of devotion. She got heat for that. She, right? got, she, got, she got canceled serious. back in the 90s yeah, that's, for that. That's like original cancellation. Because the, mu- the oh, music gee. video, she was with somebody that was not her husband. And yeah. she got destroyed yeah. for a pop freaking lo- a song. Well, it turns out her husband at the time was not a good dude. I mean, I don't know if you're, but transgender Amy, you were fantastic just yeah, like that. That was fantastic. Well, and also, I feel like Zach so hit the harmony. I appreciate that about you. It was doubling the melody, but uh, next time, next time I'll harmonize. <laughs> but you for knew sure. the words, and that's what matters. Yes, I do. You knew the words. Stop for a minute, baby. I'm so glad you're mine. <laughs> Did you feel that? Mm-mm. Yes. Ever since the day you know all, all right, the words. On. Yeah, I do. Wow. It's embarrassing. It's very embarrassing. <laughs> but as you're saying them, it's familiar. So yeah. I remember the music video. She was on a a carousel with a guy that was not her husband. She had a and, vest, and that's what it, it was. The vest and the guy. Yeah, that's, but the that's bo- why the church. <laughs> that was the two her. things. They're like, listen. Yeah, <clears throat> this is too much. Andy's like, she had this vest. Oh my god. So she's Beautiful weaving best. she's weaving a fiction, telling a story through the majesty of song and video accompanying the song. And there's no there's no room for these are actors. Right. We're, we're creating a story. It definitely means they went home and had sex together. Uh, for sure. I mean, so I, I could get why Christians would want to avoid that. <laughs> they so. even made it home. It was the crossover. <clears throat> That's a term, right? Crossover tunes. We're yeah, good. she's yeah. That she was, was her big brick. Yeah. It was. I think she was doing fine before that, but she did fine all throughout that too. I feel like whoever shot that video also shot Rick Astley's "Never Going to Give You Up." They have the Never same. Never going to give you up. Guy had like Never the same sort of vibe to him, you know. Maybe he was wearing a vest too. And desert you. <laughs> Never going to make you cry, baby. baby. Never gonna say yeah, they go together. Goodbye. It's. It's more in the back of the throat. Yeah, I, like, I appreciate that. He like never gonna let you yeah. down. Dude, never gonna it. run around and desert you. Yeah, he's like loosely. He must be related to Michael McDonald. Oh my God! Drink and pop some. We're back in his long ago. Okay, was there any more to the uh, alcoholic uh, on the no, job pastor? No, that was it. That was it. Well, yeah. here's my question though. Okay, for you guys. What like wh- weigh in? Like, what do you think? Is that a bad thing? Is it is it accurate? Should he have been removed? What are your thoughts on that? Lots of mega churches have this as a policy, right? Yeah. And so, if it's part of the policy that you signed up for and you wrote your name on on the dotted line and said, "I'm agreeing to this," then he should know better, and they're well within their bounds to do that. Whether or not you agree with it or not, it's just totally. like they put their cards on the table when you signed up. Yeah, if he if he knew that's that's an issue. Like on its face, uh, I don't have a problem with it within me like within boundary. Like if you're if you have a problem and you can't fulfill your role as a pastor and you're inappropriately using alcohol, that's different than like, hey, having a beer while you study and create create uh your your sermon sorry i don't don't mean to laugh i'm just thinking of a pastor that's kind of juiced up a little bit and he's up there like are you not entertained (laughs) are you not entertained (laughs) like okay that was a little too much well that's cocaine that's a different that's a different also he's got a sword and a kilt and it's like (laughs) Um, dude i'm I'm agreeable zach i'm not against okay you had a little bit to maybe you know i was a little nervous and you know i'm getting on stage I'm gonna have a little something, something, and then I'm getting out there. I'm, I feel sober minded. My, I, things are clear. I'm not slurring my speech, and I'm, I'm, I'm rolling. Well, I'm not talking about Sunday morning. Like Sunday morning might be a different thing. Why? Um, you're gonna pick good, and choose. I feel like I feel like that question what we're matters. Doing. Why? <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm, I'm like okay with all of it. I'm chuckling because Zach and I have beers in between services on Easter. <laughs> In the parking lot. <laughs> that has happened before. I don't want to hear that. It celebration. Yeah. It, it, was year, like, it was years ago. Hey, man, it's it a long day. It's ago. three whole services. It's just a long I day. Mean, and uh, I still dialed in my deci- decision tone. Yeah. <laughs> I have to put up with all the worship lyrics I disagree with. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Got to cope with somehow. I have to Let that, somehow. Let's s- talk about that. What are the lyrics you disagree with? But let's go. With, we'll go there in a minute. But what's. Uh, what, Defender is the top 10. Okay, so I 
I don't have a pro if if it's like within the realm of you you keep it together. People don't know. I if people are going to find out, it's going to throw a lot of. If you know your congregation is on in this particular instance, skews conservative, are probably going to have a problem with that. It can't get. It can't come out. And so you you definitely have to do it in a way that you're you're so you're basically sober and maybe you just you're having something to take the edge off. On its face, I don't I don't care Sunday right. morning otherwise. Right. But I'm with Andy. It's like if you know the church's policy and you sign up for that, you sign the document. Yeah. All right. So let's say you're going. You made that bed. Let's say you're you're going in for a vasectomy. Easy breezy surgery. It's like four minutes long yeah. max. Do you have an issue if the doctor is crushing a whiskey before that? How much are we talking? That's what I'm saying. Like you're at the you're asking that question. You're going, is that necessary right now? Right. Can you? Is it? It's important? weird. It's a little weird it if is. you're doing it's it on weird. a Sunday morning. Like it's a little weird because it's a Sunday morning. Yes. And anyone, anyone, like you can, like what you're doing, you can replace the profession. It's a little weird. It's a little, now, it's not needed. At 11 o'clock in between three services, when we can step out and have a beer, it's a totally different situation. We're Says not, the guys who are not paid, <laughs> and that's a different story. No, no, I feel yeah. like that matters. Well, right? and we're not talking Dude, like... No. We one, get paid in breakfast you're crunch not, wraps, bro. You're not bro. slamming beers, but <laughs> no, no, no. not the past. But we had a single beer in, in the back. I was thinking about just the idea of was if this was hidden, if this was something that he was that's like weird. tucking away, then that's where that's like... Oh, oh, dude, yes. you, you know something's weird there. Like that feel that part starts to feel a little uncomfortable. Uh, I do like the idea of you guys drinking a beer in between <laughs> services, and yeah. then someone going, "You guys are having beer in between," and be like, "Do you want one?" Ne- <laughs> right, right, <laughs> and and at the same time, they might. I'm like, why? Uh, why are you questioning right. if I'm having a drink? And that's where yeah. the you're n- nobody's living this life of Jesus. And I've made a decision as an adult to do this because it just I- I'm going to go do my job, and I and I'm I'm in this. I'm not going to do this to the. Uh, um, I nailed those. There's solos. not going to be something that that throws the service off because I had a beer in between services, and if they have a problem with that, then I. I don't know if I have a little bit of problem with the church that has a problem with yes. that. I can steal me on the other side for a little bit though, too. I would have a problem. So like for me, uh, I'm a pastor and, and I would be like, okay, if, if you guys are on our worship team for now, we'll see how the rest of this episode goes. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Okay, you. I like how he just lays the ace of spades on the table. He's like, and I am a pastor. I would be like, so, yeah, I yeah. don't. It, it, you don't need a beer. Like, hey, let's just. That's chill true. Out. No, it would not be a disqualifier. But I would have a conversation with you guys and be like, hey, okay, it's Easter. Listen, I understand. Let's go out afterwards. We're going to Tony Pepperoni's. Let's have fun. Get a pizza, whatever. Get a couple pints. No big deal. But I'd be like, hey, let's chill out. No worry. Like, like, no big deal. I think we've yeah, only done I'm it. with you. I think we've only done it once or twice or seven times. Three. I say that, and my daughter plays club volleyball, and I've wanted to have something in the back of my car and go after, like, in between games during club volleyball and, like, get a beer and have a good, you know, chill out. So I understand that. But for church, I'm like, oh, maybe not the right place. There was part of me that that uh, as even though I said, "Is this out in the open? Is it?" <clears throat> Some folks can have a problem with that, and that's hard for them to to deal with. Other people would not have a problem with it, and it's hard, and it wouldn't be totally. a, a thing for them at all. And so, th- there's some weird middle version for me that exists here, which is. You don't need to broadcast it, right? Right. Absolutely. I don't. I don't need to go broadcast. If someone came up to me, I wouldn't hide it. I wouldn't go. Right. Oh, I wasn't. Oh, Zach gave it to me. It's my freedom in Christ. I'm he, living my freedom. Right, because if you're hiding it, then you yourself feel a little guilt. That makes like it weird. I, yeah. this might. Yeah. This is not right. So we can have somewhere in between where I'm not hiding it, but I'm not broadcasting it. If you're guys like, hey, great worship that hour. Let's, hey, good. Right. This Drink is a good up. test because. Like, do you want to know why it was so good? I was loose. <laughs> it was because I was loose. I got to get loose. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be a good test because of all, we've never heard one. Andy's still on the board. 
at church. We've, yeah. we've, we don't often mention the actual name, but people know when it comes up. And we've never been talked to once of all the heresies I'm spewing no. on a weekly basis. <laughs> Nobody weekly. cares. Um, at I all. do care. I care. Well, this might be the one where it's like, you know, oh, that was that. happening. We should talk about it. Okay. My, my, can I push on, on this push concept? Hard. Push yeah. it. Sure. Push it real good. Mm, 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 Wait, mm, real quick. Mm, can yeah. you, can you put a pin in that? Yeah. I feel like we just glossed over the fact that we, we have nasty Nate on the ones and zeros. Oh. And we didn't mention him at oh, all. Yeah. Oh, Nate Dog. Say hello to the people, Nate. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Dog. Thanks for having me. Okay, yeah. Nate. Production uh, value. I love it. Uh, Tell us a little bit. What was any uh, any grooming updates for your mustache this week? I trimmed it. You trimmed it. <laughs> yep. And uh, what did you use to trim it? The um, the manscaping scissors that are used for other things. Wow. Oh, so all right. How often do you clean that in between other things? <laughs> Let's just say they're rusty. <laughs> Whoa. Are they fiskers? For the viewers, you can't see Nate in his mustache it's is glorious. miraculous. It's glorious. Yeah. It's like uh, Jesus and Fergie had a baby. It's pretty awesome. It's Ron Burgundy. Speaking of heresy. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus and Fergie. The Step Brothers re- reference right there. Both timely references. <laughs> I've been called the songbird of my generation. <laughs> <laughs> it it looks great. It's magical. Cool. All right. <laughs> Stall out. <laughs> Mustache over. But hey, if you got something to say, Nate, feel free to chime in whenever. Will Just do. not that often, because you know. okay. So where are we at? Okay. Where are we at? Are we are we done right. there? Because Carrie's ready Carrie, to call put us a out. Pin in it. Go yeah. for it. Say I don't, it. What were you calling? I was going to call out something. What was it? I don't even remember. Now. I asked you to put a pin in it, and you said you would. And I did. I don't remember. It was what the not pin reading was the Bible. Okay, but that's because, a whole different we, we story. We were talking about booze and stuff, getting talked to by the church, and you were gonna, you were gonna, I think, I challenge. Remember. You had a good question to challenge. I did, but I can't remember now what we were talking about. What, I forget completely what we we're talking about. I'm sorry. That's okay. Well, it was a good old fashioned. We'll go back to it. Well, thank you for joining us here, at Bros. Bobbles and Beer. Well, whenever, yeah. it, whenever it comes up, I mean, I'll push. Speak up. Yeah, well, yeah. Push. You were gonna push hard. I can't. Re- I think I mentioned heresy. I mentioned you being a, you saying something heretical, and that was even, before, that was after that. Hmm. I cannot even remember what I was going to push on. I'm okay, sorry. well, one of the one of the reasons that it's so fan, fantastic to have you on have a drinking game when Jeff says fantastic, the fantastic, <laughs> oh, fantastic. Okay, look, 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 look. There we go. And then every time Carrie says a hundred percent, which is already two or three times. Yeah, that's right. I've not said it yet. What are you talking about? Yeah, you did. You did once. hundred percent. Go ahead. (laughs) Zach doesn't remember anything. Go ahead. hundred percent. So we really, the great part of bringing you on the show is because you listen. Yep. You're a pastor. You've got your thoughts. You've got like what you, you're, um, this is my path. And these guys, they go a little off the path. (laughs) Yeah. And so, it's fun to have you on because you are you, you try and kind of push us back in 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 a certain direction. So tell us <laughs> what what uh, over the last uh, few episodes, the last yeah. month, whatever. Where what is it or who is it that you have a you got a problem with and you have some questions for them? Which one of us is not going to heaven? That I can't. I know Zach for sure yeah. is not, but uh, he's going to deconstruct in heaven. For I, knew awesome. so I knew it. I knew it. Is that a form of purgatory? Where yeah, I, it's, I purg- work, it's Catholic purgatory. I got to work it out, and then I can't wait till that South no, Park. You know, episode. I listen. Okay, so first of all, I love the ep- I love this show because I what I value is that y- each of you are open to. You're in the process of what's God doing in my life, and you're open to options and what's God saying to me. I think the two biggest things I've had a challenge with in the last few episodes were when I think Zach said, you're God did this thing in your life. Don't read the Bible. It's going to jack you up. And I was like, Oh my God, that's so fantastic. (laughs) (laughs) And then then the other thing is the other was um, I, and I think you gave Andy a book on God's, not omnipotence, but 
what was the her- heretical omnipotence term? Yeah, it's yeah the death of omnipotence and the birth of omnipotence and i think andy i've heard you say about the that god's not in control and so there's a couple of those things i'm like okay what do you all mean by that that's a good one we should so talk about that those those are the two ones be- because those are challenge for me they're challenging and and uh, theologically they're challenging so you know the word of god you know, maybe jacking up what God's done emotionally, internally, and then is God in control or not? So for me, those are the two big, like, of the last three or four episodes, I think. Yeah. I've been like, oh, let's talk about that. But I don't know how, where you want to go. I want to hear what either one of them has to say, and then I do have a response. Can I say this, too? What yes. I love about all of God, you guys. Thank you for touching me. Physical touch is my I know. I heard. Language. I heard. <laughs> What I good thing this isn't a standing. What desk. I value, and the reason that I I rep I rep you guys so hard is that you, none of you dogmatically say I am right, and that's what I value. Mm. All of you say dogmatically, I think I'm heading in a good direction, and I'm trying to follow God with my whole heart, and that's what I love. So I should say that dog. I should say that before we go anywhere further. That's what I love about all of you, and uh, and it's inspirational. And I think guys need that today. Like, okay, we're moving mm. forward. We're trying to pursue godliness, but it's also challenging too. So I want to say that before I get into any arguments or debates. Appreciate that. Before you rip our heart out. I think it's it's good too as well because you, you don't, like if you're a, a young Christian, you're in the on fire stage, like everything is clicking. You feel certain about everything. If... If that is like a hundred percent true about 100%. about your life, Gosh, darn it. you just like, Andy loves a hundred percent so much. <laughs> you hit the jackpot. You hit the lottery. Like, congratulations! Your version of faith is the winner. Right. And you, you fell upon it at twenty one years old. Now you're gonna tell people. You know, you're so on fire. You have to correct people and all that stuff. Mm. There's a healthy version of being on fire, and there's there's sure. a weird version where you're a heresy hunter and it gets, it can get kind of gross put in because the, the more I promise, the more you learn about the way other Christians practice their, your faith, you're going to find some truthful elements in there. If you go into it, honestly, and it's, it's going to make you be like, maybe I'm not wrong, but I feel right. And I know these people feel right. And I, I know them enough to know that they're trying to follow Jesus uh, to the best of their ability. And so you have to allow for some of those differences. Um, right. So that's what I, I like about what you said. Is because like, you know what we're all trying to do. I, I'm honestly, I'm open to backing off some of my heresies, which, you know, what's funny about that is like some of the stuff you're going to say, like I would consider her- heretical. Like sure. we're all somebody else's heretic. But I, I believe you know that I, I want to be convinced of things, I want truth. And I, the joke, it's mostly a joke when I told Jeff, don't start reading the Bible um, because it's it's a reflection of the baggage I was given. And it's not a knock on my parents. Like everyone, my parents did great. They moved the ball forward from what they were given. But I, I grew up in the the Bible is God's word and it's perfect. It's it's a version of basic instructions before leaving earth. And the more I, I got into it, like cracks started to appear because you just, you get into some of the scholarship and even like evangelical s- scholars, they'll point out some of the differences and what they, th- why they think, you know, Mark varies from John, varies from Luke, varies from Matthew. Um, and it doesn't mean you, you throw out the, the baby right. Bible out with the bathwater, but that's what I almost did. And uh, because so, it's so all I perspective, was, it's all perspective. I mean, just to take that, and right. if someone's on fire, mm. like if you're like, you're on fire, you don't want to be like, hey, you really should refine your thoughts here and go and look at the Bible and read yeah. these passages. And so we can kind of, in your thought process, it's like being on fire, awesome. Um, that is amazing. To For someone to come in and be like, uh, actually... You know, I hear what you're saying, but you really need to do this and be like, you just, you're throwing water on that person's fire and they're going, they're headed towards Jesus, it seems. 
Yeah, yeah, in the in the best version. The the crappy version of being on fire for God is the guy on the street corner that's changing nobody except stroking his ego, telling people they're going to hell. He's on fire, but he's massaging his spiritual ego doing that. This is a hypothetical person, but we all know that those people exist. I I drove by somebody in San Clemente. Somebody was filming him. It's for his TikTok or whatever. <laughs> he's got the signs, everything. There is nobody around him and he's screaming into a megaphone. And I guarantee you, he's going to post the thing and maybe put in some B-roll to, to show other people. There was nobody there. He's talking to nobody, but he's doing it for his channel. That kind of stuff drives me nuts. And so when you use the on fire position to control people with the authority of eternity from your perspective, that's when I get really grossed out. All right. That's a, like a specific version of it, but there's a bunch of on fires for that, sure. that I, don't match any I, of those criteria. Correct. And I think okay. I mentioned, I, yeah. I don't want to neuter anybody's on fireness if, if don't I neuter me in this, genuine, but I know why Carrie brings that up because he's a listener. Uh, but because when you say, don't go, li- don't go read the Bible. Like you're, you're going in this direction. You're on fire. You've had this experience. It's because I don't want you to ruin your on fire. Right. And that's what I'm. That's that's. I can't. That, I can't. Go that's ahead, actually. Going. There's an energy. There's an energy <laughs> that I in in anything. If someone has some energy, oh, we're going. We need more alcohol. I Speaking can't reach energy. Energy. My, my arms aren't long enough. Jeff's energy is so hot right now. The voice. I'm turning him down a little. Amber bit. is the color of your energy right now. <laughs> So many references. No, I always heard the urine industry. Am I right, Zach? In terms of if someone has this energy about them and they're all about Jesus and they are just on fire, it's like, uh, yeah, it's nice that you had that experience. Like you don't want that. Don't don't squash what they have, that energy that they have. That energy it's a Holy Spirit thing. I don't want to squash it. And let me try to clarify, and maybe this will get Carrie a little bit off the <laughs> don't the momentum to choke me. God, no, I want um, to see. Him uh, first do that. of all, I love you, Zach. I love he loves you. you so much. He's going to choke you. This is for your own good. <laughs> no, I we I, we've been trying My to hang out. Like situation. I I want the the, the go, go ahead. Never mind. Go ahead. Oh well, it's. It's projection from me, and I, I sort of mentioned that before, because I was somebody that I would spend some time in the Bible, but growing up, it was more, well, the Bible is God's word that goes, and and God doesn't make mistakes, so the Bible is inerrant, infallible, all that stuff. Just accepting that without actually doing deep study of the Bible, it's more like pick a verse here, this is inspirational, meditate, all, all things that aren't bad, they there are uses for them even for me today with that type of thing. But it, it was starting to pay attention to the Bible and digging deep that triggered some of the the deconstruction stuff. And so that's where the joke was like if and I I know I'm not alone. Like the It took you a while to get there though, right? Like I mean that that happened later in your Christian life. Yeah. And yeah, it so, was th- it was thirties. It was like well after having kids and right. All that stuff. And, and so then being able to like have a a significant amount of time established where you're where that's not necessarily like impacting how your Christian faith is. But um, but what is it about uh, what is it that feels <laughs> triggering to you that 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 you need to sort of intercept someone earlier on in their pathway? Uh, or is that a bad description? If I'm yeah. mischaracterizing, then change mm. changes the way that's accurate. Triggering. <laughs> but, I don't. I don't like that word, but it's it's in the ballpark. I mean, it's it's mostly it's mostly motivating. mostly in jest. Okay. We, we, I, I, if Jeff wants to read the Bible, I want him to read the Bible. I think that Pete Inns book, how the Bible actually works, Pete Inns is being hype, hyperbolic and like making. A dogmatic statement but if you read his stuff he's he's giving an angle and there's a lot of scholarship there that he distills down to a popular level that is can be very helpful but if you will think he's a heretic if you 
are hardcore into inerrancy. And so I being hardcore into inerrancy myself and really into apologetics, um, it's like, I, I had the version of like Ken Ham is like, if you don't yeah. interpret Genesis one, right, you're going to get the entire Bible wrong. And so once I saw that Genesis might not be saying what I thought it, it was, or maybe there was other interpretations, it, it almost was throw everything out. And I don't think people need to do that. I guess what I'm asking is, are you, are you asking beginners to be expert level a little too early? Like they can get there eventually and it's good to get there eventually. Yeah, every, but everyone's on their own journey. But it's not helpful. It, it actually may be really not helpful for them to try to enter into and, and digest these, these types of things early on in their Christian life. Yeah, it might not be. Yeah. I think I okay. I'm not sure how to answer the your mileage will vary. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Use that illustration a hundred percent of the time. Keep right. it up. I, you are a listener. I am. And I appreciate it. I'm here for it. So the thing for me with you, Zach, is that You're not a Christian. <laughs> burning no. at the stake. <laughs> you vary from most deconstructionists in that you read you study, you evaluate, and you allow the Holy Spirit to temper. And that matters. All those facets matter. And so for me, I think we're, I don't know where we're at in this conversation, but the question I would ask we're you is- We're the part is, where we burn Zach at the stake. No, Continue. my question would be, do you believe in the Savior that is Jesus, who is God made man, who lived a sinless life? died a sinner's death, was buried and resurrected, and is now the only way to heaven. Do you believe that? That's my question for you. Uh oh my God. Uh, I, yes, with caveat. Like there's caveats to that. Like what what do you mean by some of these things? Like I believe G like Christ being the way, the truth and, and the life is the way is the the reality. Christ is the reality to all of life. Like the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. I love that concept because I think it shows God's heart for humanity throughout eternity. And I love that idea. You I, love I it, but do you say believe that it? I know that, but I, okay. I, I, I resist the the idea of like, oh, can I check this box? Yes, I'll check that. Check that. Check that. I. I vacillate, but I vacillate with some of those things, but I don't, I don't think it's right now. I don't think it's necessary to check all the boxes because I think the grace of God goes beyond my, my personal experience. That's fair. That's, and that's a hundred percent fair, but you didn't answer my question. Not at all. I said yes with caveats. No. So my question, and, and it's okay. I don't, I don't want you to feel like you have to answer what I want you to answer because to me, that is the crux. So my entire life, my entire being, my entire person, my business, everything I do hinges on the person of Jesus being the manifestation of God in the flesh who lived a sinless life and died a sinner's death for the the punishment and the penalty of sin of all humanity was buried and resurrected. And that to me is a massive aspect of who I am. Amen. And so it and 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 I want to say for the listener, I'm not expecting you to say what I want you to say because I I don't only just love you, I value your perspective. But to me, that is the crux. And right. so for you, I, I wonder if that is the variance for you. So I am on board with that statement um, in the sense that I believe, I believe that to be true. Now, if your definition of what happened on the cross includes God killing the representation of the human representation of him to satisfy God's justice. I think that's total bullshit. Personally. Yeah, I know you that for as a list, as a long time listener, atonement is a big one for you. Yeah. I know that. 
So unpack that. Why? Which gets to any of my favorite worship song. Oh yeah, which is what <laughs> the one the one that pops to mind first when you said what lyrics do you disagree with? Defender by Bethel, right? Mm, probably, Bethel. most likely. Upper room. Upper room. Upper oh, room. I can't handle Thank that you. song. Real Dude, time. You can't this either. This is how I fight my battles. No, 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 nope. That's not the one. Oh, it's we can bad. get into that it's one. It's better than that one. Which one is it? Sing it. Let's go. Uh, it, it's the first verse. Is it's really the first verse? I mean, it's 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 very self focused, and some of that, some of the individual worship lyrics rub me the wrong way. But what rubs me the wrong way is like you went you went out and b- brought the head of my enemy back to me. And all I did was worship. All I did was bow down. Something like it that. Literally in the first verse says, you bring me the head of my enemy. Can you, if you can sing it, I can probably that adjust is, it. That is the song. Yeah. I'm not a Bethel fan, by the way, but, uh, Dude, it is, it's the first time I heard it. I was what's sit- it called defender. It's, it's called fight my battles. It's called defender. No, it's, fight it's my not, ba- no, it's not fight my battles. It's called defender. Fight well, my battles is a different one. It was called defender. The song is called defender. And that's the opening line. And the chorus is, and all I did was worship and all I did was bow down. There's a couple of those things too that I have problems with, but it's mainly the Game of Thrones imagery that happens with this, like, I literally call it Game of Thrones worship whenever it comes on. And I'm like, dude, this is, it's unnecessary. It it is, I I get what they were trying to do. I understand like the connection that they're trying to draw. Go ahead, read. Sorry. Are you finding it? Read that first line. It carries fine in it right yeah. now. Yeah, I know this song. Yeah. yeah, dude. And when I heard it, I feel like both Zach and I were sitting out in the congregation. What the what? You lost me. You knew where I left me. You entered me. To- yeah, I can't. Sorry. Well, it and it's <laughs> and, just email, and the, what's Gamboa. weird is like the even the rest of the song is this like weird kind of sort of tender. Just uh, I was lost and you helped find yeah, me can't. and you redeemed me. Like you pulled me out of this, but but that line stuck out so bad. I'm like, dude. It's that's that song is so bad. That line is so bad. I would be embarrassed if I brought someone to church and they heard that because I'm like, I need to now I, I'm doing damage control after the service. Like, yeah, hey, sorry. I hope you didn't pay too yeah. close attention there because we're not really about uh, chopping people's heads off. I promise. I, I want to go on the it. record for the listeners and viewers. I am not a Bethel fan, nor do I align with them theologically. So I just want for the listener and viewers to know that's where I'm at. I don't do you guys do what you want to do. No, it's fair. Uh, um, He's a Hillsong audio, guy. Audio Hillsong. wise. <laughs> yeah. Shut up, Nate. Uh, <laughs> mustache uh, man. Audio wise, they have moved the ball so far forward sure. for worship. And I love that. Yes. The, theologically, they're jacked a up. A lot of questions. But we're not answering and, the question well, that no, I asked. There, but there's a good example of, of uh, a, a church, a, a school that's on fire that you're like, I don't, this is great, but it's like, I need to point out the negatives here instead of the positives. Also so, answer the question. <laughs> so that's, that's a big rub. Like if uh, t- the reason, so I think that's a good example of there are multiple atonement theories that all have biblical evidence so the God killed Jesus motif to satisfy, he needed the perfect sacrifice to satisfy his perfect love, apparently, through justice and wrath. Um, there's also ransom theory. There's language of God, Jesus giving himself as a ransom, ostensibly to the, some people think, to Satan, like here, here's a ransom to himself, to God. Like, I don't, I don't know. There's, there's, um, streams of universal reconciliation through Jesus. All these things have evidence biblically. And there is evidence throughout early church fathers that held all those different views. And I say that just to mention that, like, there isn't one perfect narrative about what God was doing in the Bible. Um, there's a lot of, there's, there's variations. So that's part of the, that's one of the reasons why I've been more interested in the Bible after. And as I, I feel like I'm in a perpetual deconstruction where I I always want to be testing things. 
but I feel like I've, I'm more interested in, in it now than I was when I was, quote, in the on fire stage. And one more thing, because we brought up Defender, a, a good way of distilling it down in a simple way is where I'm at with what Jesus was doing on the cross was I think God was cha- trying to change. God didn't change after, after Jesus died and rose. It was cha- he was changing people's perspective on what God was like. And so it's not, we didn't, we don't change God or Jesus didn't change God by allowing him to be killed. He revealed what God is like. I'm more comfortable with that than the other. Can I ask some specific questions? Am I allowed to or no? Is this your podcast? (laughs) Yeah, go for it. I'm a guest. I'm a guest. Do it. We will allow it. Yes. Okay. I want to Do you believe that Jesus was the manifestation of God made flesh? Yes or no? Yeah. Okay. I believe that Jesus reveals who God is. So you believe that God sent his son, Jesus, to the earth to be both God and man? More or less. I wasn't there, but yes, I believe. I don't know that. That's okay. okay. But I feel like, okay, so the reason I say that, I feel like a lot of people... I like I like empirical yes or no, and I, lo- I know your personality, I know. and I know you I like... Know. I always leave it out. I want to leave it out. I know, I know, and I appreciate that, but I feel like your (laughs) listeners need this because this is why, okay, so so pause. This is why I, I recommend people to listen to this podcast because even though there are things... Are we on this camera right now? Which one are we on? Are we on this one? Look right this one? there. Even though... No, that one is going to be Jeff. Which one are you on? That's going to be, be Jeff that's, and Carrie. That's okay. Jeff and Carrie. Is this one right here? No, dude. This one? Oh, this one. one. Look right into there. So even though I don't agree <laughs> wholeheartedly with everything that is said here, I recommend people to listen to this because I want them to have the conversation because it would be foolish to think you have to dogmatically believe something without actually having wrestled through the ideas. So that's why I'm asking the questions. And I think your listeners need to know that. So, so my first question is, am I allowed to do this? Am I, yeah, no? do it, man. Yeah. Okay. So do my, you, oh, do my. you, you, do you believe that God sent Jesus as a manifestation of, of himself, both God and human to, to the earth, yes or no? Amen. I think you answered this. Yeah. Okay. So then, do I just you? Said I believe it. I don't know it. Okay, that's fair. That's and fair. I, I used to confuse the two. That's why I say that, and that's it's very fair. important for me to clarify that. Also, because I think there's a lot of there's a lot of Christians that when they lose their faith, it's because they think it's like they think faith equals certainty, and I think some people can feel very certain fair. in their faith. But it's not the same no, thing. No, that's what I love about you is I think you're absolutely right because if you think certainty equals faith, you're screwed because nowhere in life do we have certainty ever, ever. Okay, so my second question is, do you believe that Jesus is the propitiation for our sin that he died for the reconciliation of the sins of humanity? That's a yes or no question. Maybe. Will you let me explain Maybe. if I say totally. no? Maybe. Yes, it's your podcast. <laughs> no. I'm asking. The, okay, so no. Okay, it's your podcast. I'm just asking the question. Of <laughs> the court reporter read back, he said no. Okay. Well, it it depends on what you mean by that. I yeah. I I believe that. I believe that God forgives and forgiveness as as a father in my best moments when my kids make mistakes, they're forgiven before they ask. And I think God is better than me. So I know that's not biblical, but I think you can find you can find glimpses of that throughout scripture. No, that is biblical that God is better than you. Oh yeah, for sure. But I I do think is it better for me to if I forgive my kids, if if I wait till my kids ask and I believe they're actually sorry to forgive them, what does that say about me? And I think a lot of Christians believe that God will not for doesn't forgive anybody until they come to a proper belief in him. And I, I think that falls apart the more you poke at that bear. Okay. So what I'm hearing you say, am I allowed? 
I don't, I'm not trying to take over this. No, it's good. So. These guys can jump in anytime. Zach's too. head is so big, I can't see anybody over there. We're here to have all. a conversation with so, our guests. I, 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 I love feel, that you have I questions. I feel intimidated by the beauty of these men that I'm with right now. So what I heard you haven't you seen say, my hairy back. I'm continue. I can shave it for you if you want me to. Later, we'll put you guys together, and you won't come apart. Andy's think, face was fantastic. I think Nate has a thing that you can use. I have a back shaver. Yeah. Yeah. Shears. He's got the it's pretty yeah. awesome shears. I'm I'm sorry, we I took. Do, a, I do have a back shaver. It's pretty awesome. I'm sorry, we took a right in turn. In the shower. No, continue. Fantastic. Okay, so, and this is why, I I, I don't. I hope this is okay, uh, but. Don't do that anymore. Continue. Okay, deal. Jeff, shut the half up. Shut but up. But anyways, okay. So yeah. to say that it what I heard does that's, that's not what, what may, doesn't mean what you mean, but what I heard was then God's forgiveness for us is really dependent upon his feelings towards us rather than our choices towards him and repentance. Is that what you were saying, or did I miss that? Some some version of that, I think. Unless you're setting a trap for me, and then I can change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not setting a trap. I promise you. I'm trying to to. So so can I fire yeah, a question? Can we, back bro- at you? Well, can we broaden this beyond the? I love the um, bromance that's Go happening right now. But like, let's. We, a few of us, I think, can also chime in on it too. Because one of the things that we've talked about in this is is where where does forgiveness happen and where and and where do we encounter forgiveness? And I think what you were kind of alluding to, Zach, is that from God's perspective, forgiveness has been extended already. It is in place, and it is up to us as humans to step into and accept forgiveness. Yeah, Paul, piggybacking on Paul, and I can't name the verse. God was in Christ reconciling us to him, not reconciling mm-hmm. himself to us. So so the so the idea comes that that if it, it aligns with your description of being a father, I have already forgiven you. Now, it's up to you as my kid to accept that forgiveness and and what that means in your life. That's where the reconciliation happens. Yeah. Is now, when it's two parties. But if you don't, yeah, right. So if you don't accept it, then reconciliation doesn't happen. You don't enjoy the fruits of forgiveness, so to speak, right? Yeah, and it, but it will always be God willing it, from like for with extending my kid analogy, it will always be uh, if they feel guilty and feel separation, I pray that it's never because of of my yeah. disposition towards them. It's just because they aren't, they still feel shame on their own accord, but it's not because of me, you know? Okay. That, that sounds, I, I don't think it's what you're saying, but it sounds passive. So uh, what I'm hearing is God's grace and forgiveness is enough and there doesn't need to be a conscious decision of choosing to believe that Jesus is the Son of God and repentance that follows that. So that's what I'm trying to ask. And I'm I'm not accusing you of saying that, but it sounds passive like, well, if my kids know that I love them, then they're okay. Am I missing that? And again, I'm not saying you're saying that. That's what I'm hearing. Yeah. I think so, but if this is leading towards like, is there like a need to have a salvation moment um, or to to get saved, as it were? I feel like this is where it's going. Like for well, sure, we've had this conversation. So before. it is a trap. We've had, I'm no, not you. trying to trap you. <laughs> no. It. no, I'm not trying to trap. We've had this conversation no. many times before regarding like. When you're a little baby and you never got the opportunity, like, oh, well, you didn't have that moment, so are you saved or not? Like, we've had that over the years multiple times. And so I, that's where, Zach, you always seem to rest in, like, nope, if he, he's saving everyone. He's created and he's saving. Yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I'm like a universe. I, I, I don't want to say, hey, I'm I'm a universalist and that's the way it is, but I lean towards like the idea of God's grace being limited to my experience or to the experience of somebody born into sex slavery. So if that if that person 
doesn't come to a saving faith according to the classic kind of Romans road model of learning that they're a sinner, they need salvation, and so repent. Um, the idea of grace, God's grace being limited to to each individual's experience makes God's grace small. And that's kind of where I'm at. And I also believe that there's a if you read I don't Paul, agree. Yeah, and I I don't I don't uh that's not surprising. Zach doesn't agree but no, with no, himself. But, keep going. I, just, but I, don't say I, I think I think there's some there's some things in in Paul where he talks about working out your salvation. There's this there's this process. So. I worked out today. Yep. <laughs> Zach it, it's part of it. Zach, you're you're as you're Carrie, saving your body. As Carrie said, you're <laughs> you're kind of passive hold everything in tension always leads to an well, I don't know. I, I, well, I don't know behind that door. I don't know behind that door. Yes, yes, Jesus and I do God. Str- and- I definitely struggle with the classic evangelical, we need to make sure people get saved so that they go to heaven when they die. Otherwise, they go to hell forever. I, I don't believe, I think eternal hell falls apart when you, when you uh, study it. The idea of maybe wages of sin equaling death, that hell might be, this is the place where People that don't come to repentance are destroyed, and that's their punishment. You know, I think that's better biblical evidence than an eternal uh, damnation sort of motif. But both of those, I really I struggle with, and because I feel that way, it doesn't mean it's true. Do Do you hold the sixty sixty six books of the Bible as the canonical scripture as infallible, or no? What do you mean by infallible? But probably no. <laughs> okay, I Dude, think, we've had this conversation so, so many times over the years. Like, like it's, and again, I want to. What I value so much about you is that you are learned, you are read, you read things, you actually study things. Whereas most people who are struggling with this, they are just like hurt or offended and they they deconstruct their faith and they don't actually have knowledge of this but also i think i also think that it's important to note that the pain points that you and your wife walked through in losing a child are forming for this would you agree or no 100 percent. okay <laughs> let's go 100 percent. yes and that's uh, magical girl. because that's a big deal but but when I listen to you, I go, good God, this guy, he reads, he learns, he digests this stuff. But I think personally for you as a list, as a longtime listener of bros, Bibles and beer. Thank you for saying that correctly. Yes. Not beers, but beer. But I, there is, you, my assumption is that you would you adhere to the fact that Jesus is a savior. Yeah. And you adhere to the fact that humanity is flawed and we need a savior and that God has a plan for flourishing for us. But then there is this fundamental breakdown for you. This is my assumption. I'm not putting words in your mouth. I like the way you say that word. Yeah. Where you go, I'm going to, I, you, it's like, okay, so the bottom line is you have, you believe that God is who he says he is. You believe, and, and the only way you can know that is from the word of God, but yet you- From the Bible. Yes, but you also- do you discredit it? Do, uh, do I? So I don't want to do. do that. So I, I, but not into, and, and I'm not trying to put you, I, I hope this, I'm not trying to crucify Zach on this podcast. This is my I, intention. I think this is a good pod. Yeah. I want to get to the question you asked Andy at some point too. But I listen to you and I go, you, you believe in a savior. You believe in heaven. You believe in hell. I know you do. Whether you, even if you were to talk circles around it, you still believe in it. And yet, all those things came from the word of God. And then you supplement that with other things. And it's confusing for me. Okay. As a person. I got it. Um, 
as a turtle, it's not confusing. <laughs> no, no. I get it. Yeah. Got this hard shelf. Don't have to worry about it. Uh, it's funny you mentioned that. Somebody lost a turtle in our neighborhood oh. and there was there was a sign out for a, with a $500 reward. Oh my God. And so my kids went out there with our dog oh, yeah. to hunt yes. for turtles. This is a bad squirrel. Dude. We're having a bad squirrel moment right now. Oh my gosh. Michelangelo. Did they find him? Jesus. So help us. I, I don't I hear some people define infallibility and I'm like, okay, I'm I'm on board with that. But I, I just it's it's tough for me to look at how the Bible came to be and the way it was put together, edited, authored, and have any sort of doctrine of inerrancy. I think But yet you choose to believe in a savior. It doesn't so that's mean what, that's what my but point that's, is. That's though. the that's the difference. Is like to, to me, it's like. But the savior only comes through the canonization of the scriptures that you read. How, how do we know about? How do we know about? But my, Caesar. How do we know my, about my any point, historical? My point is though. My point is that I listened. I, I mean, I'm a long time listener of this podcast, and I I know you as a person, as a friend. Yeah. And you actually have a love for the Savior. You have a love for this. And then at the same time, you dismiss some things. And I go, well, you can't you can't believe this and dismiss that simultaneously. That's, that Can doesn't work. Can you give work. me a, a specific of dismissing, like believing you, in Jesus, but you, dismissing you what? Cannot, you either have to accept the canonization of the scriptures or you, you can't. You cannot choose because either Jesus is a son of God he was born of a virgin. He's God made flesh. He was the manifestation of the spirit of God and he lived a sinless life and he died a sinner's death. He was buried and resurrected right. or he wasn't. And if he, you, you cannot dismiss the scripture and, and accept that because. Is it possible that like you've referred to only a portion of the new Testament when you've described that, those things. And so is it, is it possible that like Zach can take a view that 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 also takes into account humanity and uh, for example, a lot of the inconsistencies and the stuff that that if if you pay close attention to them can become problematic and go well there is humanity in the middle of that and totally. there's humans trying to give an account of what they saw totally. that was happening line up all the details about the cross narrative they they're not possible to all line up. Right. And, and so that to me it's like infallibility implies this like perfect this level of perfection that has no no holes to poke into it. Inerrancy right? implies that infallibility oh. is not. I don't I but that might be a disagreement between us. Okay. But I would even say within that though I don't think you I might. I'm intense as an individual. So for the listener, that's okay. I yeah, might we like sound it. intense. We're fine right now. Everybody's fine. good. <laughs> but but I, when I listen to you guys speak, and I listen to you specifically, Zach, I go, this guy has a love for the Savior. He has a love for the church. He has a love for the things of God, and yet at the same time, also disassociates some things that I go, personally, how can you dismiss this and choose to believe that? And I think that it becomes it comes down to personal experience, and that becomes dangerous. Now, you, It can be. I agree yeah, with you. Yeah, it and, can be. And you, though, Zach, I would say, again, you, you're the exception because most people deconstruct their faith because they're pissed off. But you actually read. You read books on both sides people who are for and against. And I love that. Like, I know I listened to the Christmas where you gave Jeff and Andy books and I love that. I, I listened to the whole, I listened to all the episodes. So I'm a long time listener and I love that about you. But I know at the end of the day, you, you're a believer, but yet there's, there's some things for me person. Fundamentally, I go, yeah, you but can't disc, you can't choose this one and not accept this one. If that makes sense, yeah, it does, and i i don't I don't see I don't know if we, we can deep reconcile. So quick. I'm this. sorry, guys. No, no this don't. is what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> um, yeah, I just, how can you be a Christian and not be a Christian, Zach? <laughs> but you are. That's a really good question. If Andy. we all full, if we all died right now, I believe a full full heart, a hundred percent, you'd be in heaven. 
I do believe that. Oh, where do you think heaven is? Oh, God. Pour some basil. <laughs> I have to pee. Can I pee? I know. We should do that. We should. I, I feel to, like we need I'm to make to pee that right happen. Now or no? no, we can do that. <laughs> we can pee. I mean, his not, carpet's cleanable. Not like right now. But I have like, to go pee. I have you to. You can go and do that and I'm then just, come back. Okay. okay. No, do yeah, it. Yeah, we can take a pause. And then we'll talk behind your back. Yeah. That's fine. Do it. I don't, I, I don't care if you talk behind my back. It's fine. I no, we can pause. I do want to. No, let's not pause. Let him go to the bathroom. I actually want to talk to Zach about this. Maybe I'll go to the bathroom then too. Fantastic. You go to the bathroom. Do you remember when you were a little kid and you'd yeah, pee with your that. buddies into the same toilet? Sword fight. Don't cross the lines. Streams. Okay. Don't cross the streams. I mean, honestly, Zach, this is a conversation that's come up a whole lot. And as Carrie's bringing this up, I'm like, okay, this this is definitely stuff that we have we have we haven't just perused. We've there's been arguments over this. How can you believe this? It's been a while though. That. It has been a while. But you know, when did Scott move to the Northern but we we got you know we're doing YouTube now and so there's there's <laughs> new listeners we got to refresh this stuff sometimes uh, I we can never understand God so and there's nobody if you could then he's worth nothing yeah somebody wise said as soon as you're talking about God you're talking about less than God and that can be really frustrating and I believe that's true but. I, doesn't mean you can't know things about God. I, I think the idea of he sent his only son and that atones for all of our sins. People are like, who would kill their own son from a worldly perspective? Well, he didn't. There's good news. God didn't kill his son. He, but he sends his... He didn't have Abraham sacrifice Isaac. His Why would he son, kill his own son? His son goes to the cross to die on the cross. And he could, I don't know, cut himself... Somehow get him, I don't know, rip himself out of there and, and uh, get himself free. I have no idea. But he he stays there. But the point being is he's he's been sent. He's born of a virgin. He lives this life. He gets into his 30s. There's amazing miracles that happen. And then he's put to death because it's like you are raising up a people that are going to go against the empire of Rome, and we will not have that. And so you have this figure that historically is true and and biblically is Jesus Christ. And when we think of the Son of God, I think people get stuck. I think people get stuck in the worldly view of like what it is to be a father and a son. It's like, we have no idea what God is, although the creator of everything and Jesus, you know, has been sent and he's the, the son of God. He's God. And he's, he's Jesus human all in one. And so when you're like, it feels like you're always, uh, why would that, why would someone do that? Why would that be uh, that, that this God, God's son would be sent and that would atone for everything? Um, ultimately, in my perspective, it's like there's perfection. Nobody has it. Died on the cross, rose from the dead. If you follow that, there is crystal clear, Holy Spirit driven life to be had. And you know when you're falling away from it because you feel like pain and frustration and just like because you're pulling, you're wanting the worldly things. And I, I, and we've had this conversation so many times. I'm uh, not sure exactly. Because what you're saying, you, what your be, question is. Because you, you, it's it's not really a question. It's I'm pointing out that you're wrong. You, I sometimes I think you're saying that God is like a literal father here on earth, and why would He send His His Son to die on the cross? He didn't. I, okay, what? That's Maybe. what I mean. That's exactly what I mean. You, you it's a worldly view well, uh, of God, what a father and son hears on I, earth. I just mean he didn't. This isn't 
I don't think God needed to destroy, destroy something perfect in order to be able to forgive us. I think that the creator of the cre that's, that was my question. One of my questions to Scott and during one of these conversations and what I was going to ask you, Carrie is like, can God just forgive without sacrifice? No. Why because not? He, and that is so confusing to me. He That's can't. the part that I'm totally Why? baffled by. Why not? And and I listened to... Then how was Jesus forgiving and telling his followers to forgive before his death and resurrection? But you get that, though. Do I? I get it, but do you? Ooh. I, I do. And, and that's what I love about you is that like everyone I've ever met that's deconstructing their faith, they don't ever fit in the category of Zach because you actually want to know. You're stroking my ego so hard right now. I mean I, that. I care so much about being an individual that's unique and no, special you and do. precious. And, th and that's what I value, but I want to I want to communicate to the listener because <laughs> <It's true. laughs> sometimes your listeners, they might jump onto the, the bandwagon of what you're doing, but they're not doing what you're doing. It's like saying, I want to be, I want the body of Zach, but I'm not going to eat like he eats. I'm going to work out like he eats. It works out. So I, I think that that's the uh, thing that okay. you do. So there's some danger there, maybe. Yeah. Well, yeah. and but we've no. talked about the difference of there's deconstruction and demolition, uh, right? Yeah, and I love that you made that, that term so clear, and I love that. And that, and there's there most, I think I would most people I've encountered, I can't speak demolition. for the whole world. It's demolition. It it's yeah. just not that they're, it's not that they're trying to understand it more deeply. No, they're just like I'm hurt up. and I'm angry and I'm ready to do away with this. So yeah, and, we'll, we'll put nothing up in its. Path afterwards. One of the things that you guys have talked about is that in the previous episodes, I think you talked about can is I forget. I don't want to replay. I don't want to say what you said, but controller in charge. Yes. Yeah. And, and I, which I, one do you land on? I believe in the sovereignty of God, and I believe He created His His nature created a fundamental playlist for humanity. And so as a result, he does not interfere, but he can. But that's irrelevant for this conversation. And I believe that that at the end of the day, God wants his best for his kids, the end. And we have a decision to choose whether or not we pursue his plan or not, the end. And I, I agree with that, Carrie. I just think is it's possible that if God's grace is not limited by time and space, by our time and space, that that might just continue. There might be a, a forging. There might be the, the fire that needs to burn away all impurities that's sometime beyond this flesh and blood to where ultimately Jesus is the way and ultimately people will realize that. But that's where the infallibility of the scripture comes in because there is no way to the Father except through the Son. And you, there is no, at the end of the day, there, you either believe in an eternity in heaven and hell or not. It's fine. You don't have to. I do. I believe there's an eternity in heaven or an eternity in hell, the end. And your the differential is whether or not I believe that Jesus is the Son of God and I accept him as my savior. The end. Okay. Is yours yours is less of an if, but more of it's talking about the when, right? Yeah, which I, I fully recognize if there is an eternal destination where where people are separated from God and there's whatever it looks like. The the fire thing is a metaphor. It's probably not actual fire, but whatever hell is for eternity eternity if you believe in that like yeah you better believe you should be on the street corner you should be people are actually dying and going to hell forever and there's no getting out of that and so i i i don't blame the evangelical impulse to and the urgency to convert people but and what do you believe i i just think god's grace is bigger than that and so but his grace cannot empirically your your concept of god's grace would be based upon his word for our life and empirically his grace cannot supersede his nature and either his grace is available but it's dependent upon repentance 
Yeah, and that's the it, it's the when, not if. That's what I was trying to say. Is that Zach is saying that there's not a that it is it is and always will be available. Yes, time out of mind to the end of your life. No. Okay. Well, that's what you believe. Yeah, and, that's and, that's. And, I'm, and, I'm trying to explain that okay. Zach. You that's would okay. Zach. You would say that beyond the end of your life. What that it, it that the it is hell? still available. Cheers to universalism. It's a Christian <laughs> universalism. Oh my god! <laughs> it's a real. Th- it's a real thing. And there were there were actual early church early church people that had important things to say about that. It, this isn't some newfangled thing based on. No, cultural. of course no. But please unpack. Um, well, the, the quickest way is when Paul says, as in Adam, all will die and in, in, in Christ, all will be made alive. All rise. Yeah. And I think, I think the, the all in Adam, who's in Adam is everybody in Adam in sin. He's using the same group of people to say what Christ is, is working for. And I, I, the difference is like, I would look at that and be like, yeah, but not all. But now it's like, Maybe Paul meant all. Like whoever's affected by sin in Adam. I mean, it is, is going infallible. To be made, so, right? going to okay, be made alive. wait, hold on. Okay, so just for the record, if not all people in Christ will be made alive, it makes that statement meaningless. Okay, hold on. I need <laughs> I need some verification here. So what you're saying is that I there is no ne- necessity on me as an individual to receive the grace of God nope. that contributes to salvation. No, I'm not saying that. Okay, would you explain the that process then? of it depends when the process of of the the Christ, the cosmic Christ beyond time and space, time out. The eternal explain, Christ. Hold on. For because I'm here, I need you to explain this because <laughs> if I'm gonna rep this podcast, <laughs> would you explain to Lister what you mean by cosmic Christ? Christ. Well, remember, he's only one of three. So don't. Yeah, this this opinion doesn't represent the opinion of these. I, I, if you don't know this by now, but maybe you're a new listener. This is the, your first I'm episode. Just, I'm going to rep this podcast. This is good. I'm going to say Zach's a heretic. And it's clear. It's, it's clear good. that Excellent from your perspective, choice. I'm a heretic. I recognize this. But, is, I, but I love you. This is a minority position. Okay. I, I recognize the I'm a cosmic the Christ. What I mean by that is. When you when you talk about like when you read John one one for John there's no like some of the other gospels the birth narrative is like superhuman there's there is the virgin birth like born of a virgin type stuff but there's the, there's the mate the manger John is like hold my beer I'm having none of that it doesn't matter this Jesus was the word before beyond all time and space in the beginning was the word this is a pre existent yeah. Christ is pre-existent before all time and space, according to the Gospel of John. That's to me, that's cosmic Christ beyond all time and space. Now, why did God need Jesus to come and do what He did in the here and now, two thousand years ago ish? It's maybe that's the moment where that was the best moment for people to learn what it means. It, like that's that's when. It That's, seems like it's worked pretty well. But according to scripture, it said at the appointed time. Right. Sure. sure. Yeah. And and I think humans, p- people's perspectives leave them open to certain truths at different times. Not everybody's going to certain truths are not the truth. Because if I hit your car tonight on the way I'm recording right. this podcast, I hit your car. Go for it. By and the way, then, he hit your car on the way in. And I say, no, <laughs> taking this moment I, I did to not tell hit you. my car. <laughs> I, I did not hit your car. And you said you did hit my car. My truth and your truth are two different things, but that doesn't mean they are the truth. Right. So the cosmic Christ, that that's the thing I, I struggle with, with you specifically with this podcast. Was there no Christ until Jesus was born? No. He was the manifestation. So no, you guys God agree no there was flesh. or no there wasn't? No, he was the manifestation of God made flesh. Right. And he was before that. He was the word. Yeah. It, like John 1, 1, in the beginning yeah. was the word. And the word was God and the word was made flesh. He was always. Yes. So so he was cosmically beyond time and space. 
Existing. So what's your point though? My point is if this cosmic, if, if God, if, if God. cosmic throws you, if the God of the universe cares about us individually, um, and grace has a definition that we can agree on, which is unmerited favor. We don't deserve it, but it's, it's there. And so the idea that it's grace is conditional, it just defeats the power of grace. It means yeah, but grace isn't grace. That's my point though, is that you, you either decide that the word of God is the word of God or it's not. And therein lies your the, well, there's the, the difference. We're ha- we're having we're jumping off two different platforms because totally. I would, I'm okay with, and this sounds, I'm okay. I don't mean it like that. No, it's okay. I'll allow it. Jesus, Jesus, all Jesus being the word know, of God. I love Zach with my whole heart, and I, I hang out with him all. You know, the more you say that, uh, I'm starting to quit. I'm just kidding. I like, you, you doubt protest that? too? No, oh I, I don't. I don't. I believe you, and I love you as well. Anyways, go ahead. The idea of Jesus being the word of God, Jesus being what God has to say, I'm fine with. When people talk about the Bible being the word of God, that's when it gets a little sketchy. But I think that's bullshit. I'm going to say that right now. Okay. And that's my my beef is you you cannot, am I, am, I don't know if I, you're being very quiet, Jeff, so I don't know what to do. I would say it's bullshit because you where would you pull the essence of who Jesus is if if not from the scripture. I agree with that. And so what you're saying to me is mm. that I'm going to choose to accept Jesus as this, but also choose to not accept what I don't want to accept. And that to me is fundamentally, and it, it's, it, you can't do that. Well, I would, I would say I, I don't accept something just because I don't want it. I, I try to look at, I try to look at the evidence and, it's not just because something is uncomfortable. Like if something is true, I want to go with the truth as opposed to, well, I don't like that. I'm throwing it out. Right. The only different the the difference is, and maybe we can, if we remember what the other the second half of your question when we started this was directed towards Andy, so we can get <laughs> some more. Th- really need to dig into involved. Andy next. Well, I think we'll, uh, in, we'll in, save that for a future episode. Maybe. I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm in, guys. I'm don't apologize. If you apologize one more time. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> bah, 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 bah. But what was I saying? You're the, oh. cr- you're the crippled on the ground. And Jesus says, just, you know, pick up your carpet, walk. And you're like, I need to look that up first. No, my when 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 somebody looks at a historical, we have an idea of historical figures in the past based on writings. There's there's a lot more evidence for the historical person of Jesus than there is for a lot of historical figures that we believe were real and yeah, had something to you're say. You're pooling, you're choosing you. But my point is, can 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 we not know? Do we have to believe everything that was written about? Julius Caesar to be a hundred percent true. There was but a lot. You are deciding, though. You are de- you're you're deciding, and this is my my biggest challenge with you specifically is that I know from you uh, my friendship with you and listening that you actually believe that Jesus is Son of God. Yes, exactly, and I know that you believe that God has a plan for human flourishing. Yes. And so that only comes from scripture. It comes from parts of scripture. No, no bullshit. That's bullshit because you have nothing else besides scripture to point to that. But you, that's where everything bifurcates. That's not what Zach said though. I know that's fair. That's fair. He's, he's, He's saying you can't club everything all together, and so that that's fair. Why why can't we have why can't there be sections that are problematic? Why can't there be concerns about how things get interpreted? I'll give I'm, you an example. I keep trying to move around here because I like I'm leaning forward for you. I'm trying to help this. Z- yeah. Zach's big ass head he is so big. I hate, by the way, this uh, is a this is a, this, this is good, a size eight. It's good to learn this. It's good to learn this setup right now. I will and never Jeff's do this. Being this, so quiet. right now. I know now. it's because we're we're so cut out of it. Both of you have the biggest heads ever, and we can't see past it. 
<laughs> it's impossible. <laughs> so we'll do a different setup of the next time because I'll I'm be like, quiet now. I feel I'm like sorry. I'm in the bullpen. I'm sorry. No, it's good. But this I think it's great. But I, I, I do think that, that all of those things that you said can be true. And then you can also point to areas in scripture that feel problematic and are hard Fact. and are hard to describe and feel contradictory. Fact. And yes. frankly, we can come back to and look and go, the, the book that you gave me about the right. the role of God's control in the world and what is and isn't control. It basically is doing this breakdown of how so many words are currently yes. translated poorly. And the poor translations are leading to poor theology. And so so that's where it's one of those things that I think if you take if you take the deeper look, if you take the secondary chance to go, okay, wait a minute, I can believe all of those things and I can still have problems. And that's, that's, I think that's a, I think God is okay with us testing and, and trying those things out and, and digging into those things. And, and yeah, I, I don't think that becomes that problematic. Yeah. I'll give you an example from scripture. There's <laughs> some of the earlier leaders or the or some of the earlier letters of Paul, he's he's instructing people, don't get married. Like, why would you get married? Basically, Jesus is coming back very soon. Don't get married. When it was clear that it was it didn't happen in that time frame, then there's the hope of like, what what about the people that have fallen asleep? Okay, well, there's still hope for these reasons. And so was he wrong? And so Paul was wrong about Jesus coming back when he was alive. No, he was not wrong. So that now that's, this is where we disagree, but that I'm just saying that is one of an example of a lot where it's like, this is a human Paul writing, writing from his human perspective. I, I understand. I understand what you're saying, but at the end of the day, at the fundamental level, you don't, you adhere to a, an evangelical Christian worldview. Except that I, th- I think that you do, though, because at the end of the day, you believe Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he's the re- he is the reality. Yeah, but that's that's my biggest beef. Is why that do you clarify it the the way? But there's the a- way, the truth, the Jesus. But no. even but all that to say the the primary like look, give it eighty percent of your belief is founded on the Word of God. And that's that's when I listen to you and I listen to this thing. Found it on the Bible. But yes. I will call it the word of God because <laughs> I believe in it. So it's fair. The B- but I- that's B- what I'm saying L-E. is that I that's that's why I recommend you <laughs> yeah. to other people because I go, Zach, at the end of the day, the Bible is a f- primary source for him. And so for me, I go, wait, hold on. You cannot decide. I'm going to believe that Jesus is a son of God and he's a savior of mankind, but I'm not going to believe everything else. Right. I would be with, I would be with you. Because that's come from, that comes from the word of God. Now, if we could show that the Bible was written by one human and it was shown to be without error and it spoke with one voice, I'd I would be with you. I just, I, I think that's bullshit for you though. I don't think you're actually, I don't think that's a, and I mean this with all honor, respect to you. I don't said with all due respect. I said with all due respect. I don't think you believe that. I think that's bullshit. <laughs> I think it, at the end of the day, because I no, I don't. To you guys, I don't. I don't. I do believe that if that were the case, but it's a hundred percent the case that the Bible was written over over fifteen hundred years. years or whatever, or the time frame is over fifteen hundred years, uh, and the like, multiple authors. Even more. Have you ever looked editors. at the, the reliability of scripture? It's insane. I th- I think, yeah, in general, yeah. Like there's, yeah, but it doesn't mean the details all match up and it's perfect. But you still it's believe a human, it's that a human Jesus process. is the Son of God, and I believe we get that from the Bible. But that doesn't mean that if I get Genesis one one wrong, it sounds like I can't believe any of the Bible if I don't believe some of the Bible. But but and that's here, what no, I no, disagree what with I'm that, saying uh, is you 100%. still believe Jesus is the Son of God and that he is the way to heaven. The more this conversation goes, maybe not. I don't know. Like, <laughs> I think I think I'm what just you kidding. just said though, Zach, is probably is probably the most important differentiation right there, which is 
if it, it is an all or nothing, the proposal that Carrie, that you're, you're presenting is either you believe all of the Bible, um, or you, or you don't. I agree hundred percent. Yes. And, and Zach's point is like, maybe not, but he also so, believes. Th- right. Which is part of the Bible, yes. which is in the, I can believe I, I this this part makes sense to me. There are parts that don't make sense to me. Which I would agree with that. That is different than saying, okay, so the, the fact of saying that it some doesn't of it's make not sense true. to me is different from saying this is not true. Well, by not true, do you mean like it's a story? So, stories can be true. Yeah. So and so think, for me... I think often, story, the, often the literal truth is less compelling than the bigger metaphorical truth in a lot of, in a lot of the Bible stories, but f- for you, go ahead so, put a, put a bow on, on where you're at. Cause I, I feel like th- with what, w- with all of this, like you're, w- we've differentiated where we're yeah. at. And I would like to think I'm the type of person that would be okay with moving back to a version of infallibility and inerrancy or, if I believe that's where the evidence led, but currently I'm not there and we're just, we're having, it's almost like two different conversations. If, if I don't believe all the Bible is, is true in the way you do, then we're going to, it's a different starting point. So there's going to sure. be a, a rub. So but ultimately we're both trying to find the truth. So one, I don't think, the Bible is just the only place to find the truth. I think the word was in Jesus. Jesus rose, sent his Holy Spirit to live in us. I think that word is in us. We, we know the truth in us. And, and I've had this, I had this art, I've had this argument over the years with, with Scott, um, which he, you know, he's like, Hi, it Scott. Does, doesn't, you know, he's like, you, no, no, no. He just, the understanding, it's fine. Everybody has their own experience with God. And Zach, I, I think, I think over the years, there's been this like fight of how his, he, he had his mom, he had his mom, uh, you know, go, Hey, this is, this is how God is. This is the, our beliefs. This is how you have to believe. If you don't do it, it's, you're going in the wrong direction. And, you know, as when we go from kids to adults, I think there's a, there's this, I, I found myself and I don't, and, he, and Zach said this, you know, I, I want to tear this all down and build it back up. So it's mine. It's all mine. And I'm going to leave. I don't want to do what was passed on to me. I don't want to, um, have this certainty 100%. of like you have to do this, you have to believe this or this, and and so I believe that's why there's this constant, which I think is really good. That Zach is constantly like, I hold everything in tension. I I think everything could go in one direction or the other. I don't want to be fully like I'm all in and not. I want I want the opportunity for people to have conversations. I honestly I feel like if he came to the pearly gates and he sat there and we'll see what happens. God, yeah. And God looked at him and he's like I, I love you. You're my son and I love that you created But I'm holding out for something better. You, you pulled <laughs> never never shame on you Andy. Sorry. And pulled you pulled other people into the conversation. <laughs> And and left it open ended for people to have some flexibility, and instead of cutting them off or cutting their fire off for for Jesus, uh, there's there's something there. Whether you're like Zach, no, bad boy, bad boy. Uh, it, it doesn't. I don't think it matters. I, I think it it's a matter. good thing. Oh. Can I can I go arm, okay. armchair uh, armchair therapist for a second? Yes. Um, there is there is a danger in the approach that uh, you never you never land on conviction for anything. I don't know if you're there for this right now, but but um, at some level, uh, p- living in a perpetual state of poking holes in things 
can yeah that's super that's not great that's that's not a good place to be i don't i don't think you're there to use to use a christianese word i i had a season where there was like well i like i thought all this was true and now i i don't know what's true so fuck it. There was a little bit of that. Right. There was a season of that. And the angry deconstruction phase where you just, you want to burn everything down. Right. But right. the good, like the, I, I'm going for like, you don't have to throw baby Jesus out with the b- doubt bathwater. You're a, you, being a Christian or following Christ doesn't mean you have to check all of the boxes that you've been taught. And, and I think, if nothing else, and maybe Carrie, I don't know if this makes you feel better at the end of this, but uh, but if if none of the other stuff works out in Zach's theology, maybe it's enough that that the Jesus part does work out. Mm. Don't mm. don't let him get away with that. I fucking dunked it right now. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I, I'm glad there was a pregnant pause. I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean, that doesn't mean that's where I have to stay. I, I don't want to stay or act like I figured it out. And I hope, and I well, I know the four of you, and I hope the listener, like wherever you're at now, even your strongest convictions, be open to change. If that's where, if that's what actually is true, I believe yeah. there's an absolute truth behind everything. We just we get little glimpses of it. We don't have all of the information. We'll get to know we it need. absolutely. Yeah, and so like a Todd Redarmel honorable mention. Oh yeah. yeah, absolute truth. We don't get to know it absolutely. Yeah, yes. Which is that, and that doesn't equal relativism, right? And, and so I, I think that's where some of the more universalistic language, even the Christian universe, like even the importance of Jesus in universalism, I, I understand. There's there's a fear of like well, sin doesn't really matter then, and so all. All those things are important, and yep. I, I do think sin matters, and it's, it needs to be dealt with. Uh, it's just a different interpretation, and like I said, I'm not, I'm not done. Well, boys, this has been an incredible conversation, and yes. the booze has been also incredible, and and Zach Strong, uh, go ahead, and Zach, and Zach <laughs> Strong, wrong. <laughs> let it be noted. <laughs> I'm wrong. I, I probably am wrong. Timestamp so. 142. Zach was wrong. <laughs> Rest easy in your convictions, people. I'm wrong. Uh, honest, if we're all going towards this, if this key is Jesus, Let's go. Zach, Andy, Carrie, and myself, and Nasty Nate are all striving. We're Come on. fighting for this yep. key. And we're never going to get there. One gonna, of us will get it. But <laughs> Just one of us, though. And then you have to swallow it <laughs> yeah. so that you can unlock the gates of hell after you poop it. But there, there's there's a story in all of us of of going for Jesus. So that that is my my two cents. Um, I, I don't think we're... I think we're all, as I can't remember the word, like all in process. We're all... We're trying to figure it out, but ultimately, we're trying to be the hands and feet of Good. of Jesus. Yeah, and that's whenever my faith, my faith is, you know, it it the doubts don't stop. What's what's become my reality now is just being okay with the questions and being okay with, hey, I can have convictions, great, and and not uh, and not decide, oh, this is my new thing. Like that's the danger of. Like if somebody flip flops politically, like they they discover, oh, I've been lied to about this thing politically, and then the danger is, or if you're if you're kind of a fundamentalist Christian and you deconstruct, not you, I, I pointed to you, but <laughs> what an asshole! If you're, I'm in the category of fundamentalist Christian. <laughs> Holy shit! No, no, you're not. But if if let's pretend you're a listener and you're a fundamentalist, <laughs> oftentimes the deconstruction towards say they go they or go if full you're a total Calvinist is like uh our friend Kyle Robinson is here. We're making some bread and, and some butter. And by the way, we don't <laughs> say asshole, we say butthole. Yeah, butthole. 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 Yeah. Well, one of us does. <laughs> but the danger is you become like the 
the fundamentalist version of the atheist or the deconstructed Christian where you just want to tear down the other side. You're just doing a version. You're the other side of the coin. I learned that last week. Um, and yeah, don't, don't do that. You don't have to do that. Great. Yeah. But Hey, how about we uh, consume some things or we've been consuming things. Let's do it. What are you consuming? Anybody have anything at the tip of their brain tongue? Andy? What are you consuming these days? I found out that Spotify's uh, audiobooks has a 15-hour limit per month. So oh I my hit, God, you too. I hit that pretty quick. Yeah, so I don't get it. And I'm and I'm cheap, so I'm not going to pay the extra like 15 bucks to get another 10 hours. I'll wait my nine days. That is so stupid. It, it's so funny you say that because Lisa and I just had the conversation. I was telling her about the conversation about John Eldridge. And yeah. she's like, I want to go back and listen to that. And she couldn't do it. it. Was making her try to buy it. Also, it's the only the manager that's, of the family account. That's the thing that pissed me off. Is like I'm paying for the family premium. It's but the only, patriarchy, right? Only the patriarchy, <laughs> dude. Fuck the patriarchy. Come on, <laughs> f it, f it. If it gets us to having my wife listen to audiobooks that only I previously could do, I want my wife to listen to John Eldridge. <laughs> Keep my wife's name out your effing <laughs> mouth. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So that's frustrating. Come on, Spotify, do better. Come Don't on. Don't do your best. Do my best. Although, are we complaining about free stuff that they just added onto our accounts that we not we're not paying any more for? Yeah, but they're setting us up for other stuff. Yeah, they are setting us up. It's it's a tease. All right. So, are you continuing? Oh, so you no audiobooks then? You're done with the the Lamont so no audiobooks. I am. Uh, I'm reading Psalms in the morning. I'm still. I'm still getting Look up. At you. I'm still there running. You I'm running in the morning. Come uh, on. I, I ran. Did and, you run today? And I ran this morning. And Come then, on, Andy. Then I worked out. Yes. Let's go. I work out. With my, uh, with my oldest daughter. He was working out his salvation with fear and trembling. Yes. <laughs> and but Zach does not believe You don't really believe that? Scripture. <laughs> no. No, I That's believe in the working it, of it out. Oh. If it's, if it's, he if believes if it's in the idea. Virtue, he thinks it. it's a really great idea. If you can get there, yeah. Uh, that's great, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Passive aggressive. Ooh. Yep. So, so I am. Yeah, I'm. I'm reading that. I'm still reading the uh, death of uh, like seven other books too. I'm still reading all those, all the books. Did um, you say death of? Uh, I'm reading seven other books. Yeah. I thought yeah, you were going to say death I of I started to, and then I'm like, uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not. I'm not gonna name every single death book that I'm of reading. Omnipotence. But I don't want everybody to know how much of a better human being I am. On read now and getting some of his stuff going on too so those those have been good um watching trying to watch less less screen time working hard on on cutting down the screen time in fact i started talking to my kids about it i was like hey um what other cool things in your life are your screens taking away from right now which is not so subtle shaming mm. but uh but just because i know that it's a machine that's designed to, to suck you in and uh, not let you uh, see the light of day so that's my challenge to the kids lately too. Is just, hey, what other what other cool things is it taking you away from? So that's it. That's what I'm consuming. That's good. Uh, I've been just whatever I said the last few episodes is still ongoing. Juggling different books. Um, I will say, I've been consuming a lot of editing the podcast. <laughs> Yeah. Like as this YouTube thing has been really fun and rewarding. Um, and if you don't, if you don't fucking like, and <laughs> <laughs> your short, your right shorts now. are great. This isn't going to last. Spending, I love gonna last. your shorts. It's been Subscribe, fun. Subscribe, like, share, smash the, that yeah, like smash button. Smash it. All the things. Your likes are so amazing. But piggybacking on the, the screen time thing. And what are you spending your time? Like it was a cup a week and a half ago or so where I told one of my daughters, I'm like, come outside and sit in the sun with me. And we just sat in the sun. And looked at YouTube. And <laughs> <laughs> boom. Read physical books. And uh, boom. I think the next day she deleted Instagram. Nice. And oh. she's been she's been outside reading and... Yeah. And it's not I that, know which daughter this is without you telling me. She can be back on Instagram at some point, but I... I had it. Let's I had go. the conviction to to suggest, hey, what if 
we get off all social media and just take a break. I was going to suggest that I didn't. She did it on her own. Yeah. And man. Expert level. My heart was doing high kicks. It was just like <laughs> high-fiving imaginary angels. Let's go. Um, and there's been a marked difference in her disposition. It's just you don't realize how much you can, as you're scrolling, especially as a teenage girl or a teenage boy, in my experience, I have teenage girls. It's just the can you can't help but compare yourself to other people and it just it just weighs on you and so let's go hit the reset button maybe you get back on you're better for it um but i just love that she figured that out that she needed to do that um and then one quick correction from last episode jeff you called andy the pod father about 10 minutes in I did. I, I missed that, but I missed that too. Kenny, the listener, pointed it out on Instagram, and he he was he said he was dying when you called Andy the Podfather. I called Andy the Podfather. You did, and what? Andy is a great at a podcaster. Fun? At a fun, I don't know. You it had to, to have been at a fun. I know who the Podfather is. Podfather is, but... is Adam Curry, yeah, yeah. from the No Agenda Show, former MTV VJ, a hundred percent inventor of the podcast also i he, said he's important sam smith is a brewer and andy corrected me to say sam adams but there is an actual samuel smith uh <laughs> like, and i just want to make sure i know my Mormon. breweries freaking a uh, i know my breweries and there is a sam smith yeah. brewer sam smith uh, oh adams. sure somewhere yeah. at a byu <laughs> yeah 3.5 right. uh Carry. alcohol level i've been making moonshine in my basement God, since i was go. 12 years old Wait, are we asking Carrie what he's consuming? Yeah, what are you consuming, Carrie? Yeah, what are you consuming? Uh, Peaky Blinders, for sure. Ooh. Whoa, old school. Second time, second time, for sure. And it's it's so good, right? So good. Every time, it's good. I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> Everyone says to watch it, and I haven't. I haven't either. I think you're going to push me over the edge. I watched a couple of Make episodes. It happen. I will. <laughs> Jeffrey? Uh, I am... Uh... I'm consuming physical activities. I'm just going to leave it at that. Yeah, I know what that means. Personal touch. Yeah. Personal touch. You know you have such a personal touch. <laughs> just, I'm doing physical things. I'm not sitting around scrolling. I am doing. I've. I'm, for you. Last I'm week it was physical hugging things. Tanya, squeezing her shoulders. Not letting go. Okay. He yeah. said not letting go. Thank you, Nate. That's a perfect <laughs> Nasty sign. Nate. How dare you? No, he wouldn't be. Na- he's keeping it nasty. It's a good thing. Yeah. Physical things could be a lot of things. You could be playing ping pong. It's beautiful. That's what they call it now. That's what the kids are calling it. Hey. <laughs> you put spin on it? How much spin do you put on that thing? I sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. If you get a serve, you got to show your ball. <laughs> Yes. Make sure you can see your ball the whole Somebody time. Somebody called me on that. You're like, you're hiding your ball. Don't hide your ball. <laughs> Got to show it. <laughs> show that ball. I can't, can't do this anymore. All right. <laughs> Whatever you guys are poking at, it's forget it. Nate, what are you? What have you been consuming uh, this week? Hmm. Get up on that mic, my friend. <laughs> Con- almost pretend like you can consume the mic. Actually, <laughs> yeah, that's nice. There you go. About once a year, I'd have to say. Um, not more than once I read through audible, um, what I don't read. I just listen to all the Harry Potter books. Oh, no way. Uh, yeah. So I start in January and I get them, get them done. Dude. Pretty quick. That's good, man. I like those. <laughs> First couple of weeks. Yeah. Okay. So where, where are you at right now? Book two. Book two. Philosopher's Stone. That's it. By the way. I, I mean, won't. I don't know. What book is that? <laughs> hey, no, exactly. Hey, I want to point out that's the one. Nate and I had a. I can't see Social Nate because there's like super light here. Uh, Nate and I had a moment at church when church was over and embrace it was. I think you were even a little teary eyed. We like we finished church and I'm, I'm. I told my wife I'm like I need to go say hi to Nate and I get over there and I was emotional from the end of church and I can see that he was. And I'm like, I knew God sent me to the right guy mm-hmm. and it was. It's powerful. It was powerful. That last song. It's because we played the blessing. Y'all played. Dude. The blessing. 
But I was already in the moment. The so it's just the jam. It's just just good. The Lord so it's just good service. Bless you and keep you. I just <laughs> threw up in my mouth. Make his face shine oh upon my gosh. you. Poor That's Zach. That's Poor it. Zach. Oh wait, no, sorry. We got to get. We got to tell people where to get us. All right. All right. Hey, uh, if you want to get in touch with us, please all the socials at Bros Bibles Beer. You can email us Bros Bibles Beer. Yeah, don't seem too <laughs> desperate. Please like us. You. Imagine a camp counselor <laughs> comes up to you. And you're in the cabin. Make his face shine upon you. And it's and it's light. And it's lights out. And all the kids, in. little little twelve year old Zach is in his. Dude, he's Zach in his doesn't sleepy believe bag. in it, but everyone else does. And creepy forty year old Carrie camp counselor, a little too old to be a camp counselor. I'm he's zipping all, up the bag all the way to the top and pulling it over my face. And uh, and and ca- uh, camp counselor Carrie coming in like and consumed hi, consumed by the What's spirit. What's up, buddy? Hey. It's good to see you. It's great. Do you have any fresh. secret sin to confess? <laughs> hi, Zach. What, hey, what do you want to tell me? Tell me everything right now. Tell me. <laughs> in third grade, we had a uh, we had a, a camp counselor that made us run laps. <laughs> that guy was a dick. Wait, just made you run laps. Uh, just on because, a whim or because, because those be, three sins you do three laps because we were like telling stories at night and doing like, normal you, third bro. grader stuff I'm it's like because you're in a tent and you think there's soundproof walls but he can hear everything you're we saying we were in a cabin and also <laughs> that guy had problems lord bless you I remember you his name still that's how much I hate this guy keep you. You heard all this will be the first time somebody hung themselves listening to the Make end of our podcast face <laughs> shine upon Poor you Jeff and Zach. give you peace Carrie. they can hear the lord keep I am Andy. They can hear you talking about Winnie through the ten walls. <laughs> Bros, <laughs> Bibles, and beer. Grace, Grace, Grace peace, 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 cheers. 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 All right. <laughs> I didn't get a harumph out of this guy. O M G. Get the man a harumph. What just happened? Cheers. Also, I want to talk about so many controversial things. I'm excited about that. Like, what do you... Oh, well, I guess we'll find out.